episode with Kids for Christ. Now today we are going to be learning about another animal you guys picked. So I hope you're ready for an adventure. This one's a little bit farm style. Alright, so what we're going to do is we are going to pray before we start. Then we'll sing a song and then we'll have our lesson. Alright, so let's close our eyes, no touching anything. Let's pray. Dear Lord, thank you for today. Thank you uh, just for the beautiful day you've given us. I know it's a bit cooler now, but thank you for that. We can still stay warm, Lord. And I do just pray for our lesson today, Lord. I just pray that you help us to learn something. And I pray that you help us to listen in and to enjoy our time together. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, so we're going to try a song. Let's try a little bit different. So what I'm going to do is we are going to the door. Hi kids, we're about to sing a different kind of song with the door. So, if your parents don't want you playing with the door, please don't do it with the door. But you can do it with your fingers, as it's also a finger song. Alright, or a song that's used with finger actions. Alright, so let's try this. One door and only one. Have you heard this song before? Alright, if you haven't, we'll pop the words beside us still. Alright, so, ready? One door and only one, and yet it's sides are two. Inside and outside, and which side are you? One door and only one, and yet it's sides are two. I'm on the inside. But which side are you? I'm on the inside. But which side are you? Alright, do you want to try that one more time? One door and only one, and yet it's sides are two. Inside and outside, and which side are you? One door and only one, and yet it's sides are two. I'm on the inside. And which side are you? I'm on the inside. And which side are you? Alright, now good job with the song there guys. I hope you were singing and trying to do the actions. I know I did the actions a little different. So what we're going to do is we're going to start our story. Now our animal that you guys have picked was the horse. Horse. I don't know who picked the horse, but someone picked the horse. So if someone likes horses, do you like horses? Well, somebody does. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our Bibles. I want you to make sure you get your Bibles. And we are going to turn to James chapter 3. All right, because we have actually mentioned or talked about an animal before. And something was mentioned in that passage before. Okay, so... That animal we talked about was cheetahs and it was about the tongue. But there's something fascinating about in that verse about a horse. So James chapter 3, verse 3. Behold, we put bits in the horse's mouth that they may obey us and we turn about their whole body. Now in a horse or with a horse, when someone's trying to train a horse or if you want to ride a horse, you'll notice they have reins on them and you can control the horse by those reins. If you want to go faster, we might give it a kick. If you want it to go left, you might make it go left by pulling on the left one. Or if you want it to go right, you might pull on the right one and it will go right. So the horse knows how to follow those instructions, but it does not, when a brand new horse is born, it does not know how to follow those instructions. So it must go through training. And so they train that horse to learn that. And that horse is learnt to turn in that direction. And that horse is learnt, okay, but it's a hard process First, they must walk the horse around and they must get the horse used to wearing that bit in its mouth and those reins and they may pull on it certain directions and they may get that horse to work, walk certain ways. Now, that's kind of fascinating. And then all of a sudden, they want the horse to turn. And it's a long process. Well, it can be fast depending on who's training and how long they take. But some can be faster, some can be longer, some are more stubborn than others. But you know, that horse, it doesn't just learn that overnight. It doesn't just take a day, it takes much longer than that. And you know, that horse in that process of training, it learns to turn. Now do you know, that's an interesting fact. Because in the Bible, 
we talk about, I guess, when you see Jesus. And the last time, was the last time we talked about the light? No, fruit of the Spirit was the last one, which we are now was that? Fruit of the Spirit was the tiger. Then before the tiger, we had the shark. Okay, so when we talked about the shark, we talked about vision and light and darkness. And you know, with the horse, if you're learning to turn from darkness to light, that's a good thing. Now, who is light? We talked about that. Jesus is light. Okay, so that horse learns to turn and learns to obey. Do you know we need to learn to obey and we need to turn to the light. We need to turn to Jesus. If you haven't turned to Jesus, I'd encourage you to go back and have a look at some of our other videos we've done as some of them have had more stuff about turning to Jesus, especially the shark may have been one of them. Or if you want to ask one of us, you can contact us through the church website. Now, another fascinating thing about a horse, though, is something very interesting. So I want you to turn in your Bibles to Hebrews. Now, have you seen a horse do maybe some jumps, some equestrian stuff? You know, they jump over those bars and they do funny little trots and they do all kinds of stuff. So we're going to go to Hebrews chapter 12. This is the main thing we want to look at today. Okay, Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1. Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which doth so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross despising the shame and set down at the right hand of the throne of God. Now here we see a couple of different things, okay? Uh, first thing we want to talk about is laying off the weight. So let us lay aside every weight and the sin which so doth easily beset us. Now if a horse is going to take a jump, if it's going to be in a competition and it's going to be jumping over things, do you think it's a good idea to pack a lot of weight on that horse. Maybe I could take a backpack and I could take a snack pack and I should take, oh, maybe get some of my favorite food and put it in my bag. Or maybe I should get some weight so I can do some exercising later and put that on my back and ride the horse. Would I do that if I was in a competition of jumping over those jumps? No, that would make it heavier on the horse and less chance for it to jump over those jumps. So do you know, when a horse is jumping over those jumps, they're gonna have less weight. So they may train those horses to try and make them lose weight. Or they might, the people that are riding those horses might be on a diet before they compete, so they have less weight. Do you know, that's a fascinating thing, because this verse said, and the sin went so deep, easily beset us, laying aside every weight. Do you know there's some things that can weigh us down? There's some things that can be a bit of a, a burden on us. But do you know, God doesn't want that to be a burden. God doesn't want us to keep hold of that. You know, God doesn't want us to keep hold of our sin. That's why he sent Jesus to die on the cross for us, so we can give that weight to him. Do you know, it's it's so much easier when we can cast a weight. Now imagine if you were going, oh, you were going to compete in discus, okay, or shot put. Have you ever seen someone put a, a fishing line on their shot put or their discus before they've gone to throw it out and they've gone to throw it and then they pull back on the fishing line? No, they don't do that. They throw it as far as they can, not wanting to receive any of it coming back at them because they want to win. But you know, sometimes our life can be like that. We need to throw things as far as we can because we don't want them near us. You know, sin and temptation. We talked about temptation when we talked about the snake. Do we want to be tempted? Do we want to fall into the snare like that snake did with that egg? No, we don't want to be tempted. We don't want to cause trouble for ourselves. We want to throw that away, cast that away. Don't be tempted by it. Now, here's another thing. In verse 2, 
Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. Looking unto Jesus. Now, when we talked about the shark and we talked about the light, looking to the light. The same thing here, looking unto Jesus. Now, when a horse is competing in those horse jumps and those different activities when they're in the equestrian, do you know what would happen if the horse started looking over this way? Maybe there was some noisy people over here and the horse started looking over that way. What do you think happens when a horse looks that way? So does its feet. So it starts to move that way. Now, can a horse jump sideways over the jump? No! So, the horse needs to be looking and focused on the jump. Just like we need to be looking and focused on Jesus. Now, do you know that's pretty interesting? I like that idea that we need to be focused on Jesus. Now, as a jump can be a bit scary. As you get older, you might try and do hurdles when you start running in races and then you try to do hurdles where you gotta jump over the hurdles as you run. I remember when I did hurdles for the first time and I looked at the hurdle and I've gone, huh, and I've chickened out. But you know, when you're running a race, all right, and you have a hurdle in front of you, you shouldn't be looking down the side but you should be looking ahead to the finish line. And just like that, we need to focus on Jesus. I'll never forget seeing little kids run in a race and the kindy kids, or maybe you're in kindy, and you know what they would do for the kindy kids? They would have their parents at the finish line cheering them on, come on, come on. And those kids would be looking at their parents running towards their parents. And just like those kids running towards those parents, just like you might run a race and you might run towards your parents, you need to run towards Jesus, okay? So I want you to remember that this week. Think about looking unto Jesus, all right? So, you guys have a good week. Remember, if you haven't subscribed, click the red button below that says subscribe. If it's gray, that means you've already subscribed, so don't click it. But if it's red, click it. So you can keep up to date and keep following and seeing what other activities come up. Now I believe the last activity that came up involved Nutella and crackers. Ooh, yum. So I hope you go check that out and see what that's all about as it would be interesting and a bit of fun. So I'd love to see you guys keep following us and seeing what else comes up next. So if any questions, click on the link below to get to the contact page so you can contact us. And you guys have a great, good week.